Um, it's September 7th. We're out here at Lincoln celebrating the, the new, the just retired um, Tail 667 of the Constant Phoenix. I'm here with two of my favorite humans, the 45th RS Commander, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Chris Crouch, and with the 21st SIRS Commander, Lieutenant Colonel Sean Orm. Both of these gentlemen um, from the 55th Wing and from AFTEC fly these two beautiful aircraft. I'm gonna ask him several questions about what today meant to the overall community and how special it was to retire um, our oldest Constant Phoenix, Air, Constant Phoenix aircraft, tail 667. So Chris, what was it like flying this old but beautiful aircraft? So ma'am, great to do interview part two, <laughs> yes, since interview yes, part yes, one yes. was cut. We were That's supposed right. to fly 667 on its Finney flight approximately yeah. a week ago, That's but right. it had some maintenance issues. Well, that just shows how many dividends the new jet has been paying. We've already launched three operational sorties on the jet and have been doing local flying. So it's already awesome seeing the reliability of the new big motor jet as opposed to the tail 667, the small motor. So it was, an, it was a nice enough ride. It's nice to have that brand new ride. Yeah. Well, going along with what Chris said, <laughs> what's ironic about this is that amongst the small motor fleet we had here, both the Constant Phoenix and Open Skies, uh, we used to call 667 a Dreamliner because she was the most cooperative of the small motors. <laughs> yeah. But I, I know she's ready to retire at this point, and it's very exciting having this opportunity to get upgraded aircraft, restoring the Constant Phoenix mission yeah. to the RC fleet yeah. and everything. So training, maintenance, all that gets easier. And as Chris mentioned, we're already on mission and we're doing great. So we really look forward to the future in the Phoenix program. What's it like, big motor versus small motor? The, <laughs> yeah, the cap awesome. The capability <laughs> that we've been getting out of the jet has been yeah. awesome. When we were talking about burning 15, 14,000 pounds yeah. of gas an hour, we're now talking about 10, 10 9, 8,000 pounds an hour. So mm -hmm. for that same fuel load from a tanker, you're now flying perhaps four extra hours, getting that much further out to places that were previously unreachable. So we can help provide our partners a whole lot more samples from places we weren't able to. That's right. Sean, the demand signal for these aircraft is astronomical. Can yes. you talk about like just the tasking process, just in general, of what, um, how, how much people love this jet? Yeah, this jet's so awesome uh, because it, it provides a unique service. This mission, this aircraft is a one of a kind in the Air Force in terms of uh, the nuclear sampling mission and the support of the treaty that was mentioned earlier. Um, as people have seen in the news, and just in general, there's a lot of uh, situations that have been developing and everything. And before the ability of the original aircraft to answer that, it could be a struggle at times just because how old they are. With the new refurbished aircraft, we're, we have much more assurity and greater reliance. Uh, the taxpayer, uh, United States, our allies can have more uh, assurity that we'll be able to meet the mission requirements. Chris, what does this mean to the community to have the new WC-135? So this is great because as squadron commander, I used to have a cadre of pilots that were trained on the small motor, yeah. some on the big motor, a rare few like us two who could do both just old enough yeah. to remember both sides. Now I can level the bubbles across the entire fleet, all can train, all can fly yeah. the WC. So it opened up a bigger pool of resources for me, as well as brought another resource for the entire community to train on. So we're yeah. really looking forward to it on that aspect as well. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, I'm, I'm really lucky. I feel um, very fortunate that I have a tremendous partnership um, with my brother, Colonel Finlayson. Uh, Cobra is his call sign. Cobra is the, is the commander of AFTEC. Sean, can you talk about the, the tremendous relationship that um, AFTEC has with the 55th Wing? Yes, it, it, it is a, a relationship that goes back pretty far. Yeah. Uh, essentially, we might as well be twins. Uh, <laughs> we need the front end, the back end, the maintenance, the scientists, all to be on the same page and working together at any given moment. That's what allows us to be responsive and make sure that we get the mission done quickly, safely, efficiently, and accurately. Because in this job, accuracy is absolutely important. And so um, I see our relationship only continuing to grow yeah. as, as we move forward, uh, especially as we get more crew members, we're able to do more with the aircraft. Uh, our relationships with our friends in different parts of the world uh, it's only going to grow uh, now that our aircraft are something that they more readily yeah. are able to uh, handle because That's it's right. modern. <laughs> so 
Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I, I, I see nothing but a uh, great future for the 55th and half tag. Yeah, I love it. Um, well, gentlemen, before we kind of wrap up this interview, it's, it's really hot out here. <laughs> it's, it's an awesome September day in Nebraska. We love it. Um, Chris, any um, parting shots um, for, for the worldwide audience on, on the beauty that is these two aircraft and the beauty that is this patch? So, 45th, great to have. Uh, there is no 46. No one else does what we do. <laughs> Couldn't do it without our mission partners, right. like Sean was talking about. The new jet's amazing. Nowhere on the world is yeah. isolated uh, from us anymore with the capabilities that just this jet provides. So as you see stuff in the news, know that we have the capability to find it. Sean, any parting shots? I, I can't explain how excited we are in terms of what this allows us to do. Uh, everything for your jet one has just gotten easier, uh, more efficient, and more easily sustainable and that's what we really need and and we feel uh, immensely excited about what we're going to be able to do in the future well thanks guys this concludes the interview um, kind of sad but bittersweet to say uh, goodbye to 667 but we're really proud to uh, to bring into the fleet 836 um, it's a really tremendous day not only for these gentlemen but for the entire united states air force and certainly everybody in the 55th wing and at aftac so thanks guys out here